hamstring curls with a band is where I would start people on hamstring work if you don't have any other equipment, so homework and, and you know, home gym stuff, outside, that sort of thing. You can even do it in the gym, but this is non-machine based, just using some basic equipment like bands and balls. Um, I think very important for post-surgical knees, definite must, especially the ACL, because we're using hammies, we need hammies in there. Um, but it also just gives that person a bit of bias on the hamstring. Remember, we're always using hammies when we do hip extension and we're doing knee flexion. So when we're doing squatting, lunging, dip, we're all using hammies. This is just isolating things down to a specific area. Maybe someone's had a massive hamstring tendinopathy, you know, and they're not running very well and they're getting knee pain. And that hamstring tendinopathy has been there for 10 years because they went and tore it, and now it's turned into this gross sort of problem going on. I've got a client at the moment, Amanda. She's got bilateral 50% hamstring origin tears and tendinopathy. She's just like, and she's trying to run every day and realize, stop that, you know. So we have to work on it. It's very hard to get a very, very chronic, you know, completely compensated system at the back. And you'll see her, she's one of those girls with no bum and no hamstring because it just doesn't work. She's trying to run, she's compensating everywhere. And her calves have actually grown to sort of do all the work for the knee. Um, and these people, we have to you know, pull them back and get them activated and get them working. And this is one of the things that you know, I've got her working hard on, plus the single leg work on the hamstring um, bias as well, which you'll see coming up. And getting her doing some closed chain stuff, some open chain stuff, really working on that. But just remember, it's not, it's a, it's not a sort of, this is where, you know, as a, as a physio, we sort of go, oh, just single leg, you know, isolated work, is that right? You know, isn't that just fitness and training? But we're using it for rehab. We're trying to do that, and it, there is a massive place for this. So, banded curls. Can I grab you, Fran? I'm going to grab this band here. Um, this is probably as hard as you need. You could probably go down to a tubing band, especially you know for home, and especially if you're going to give them a homework. These are you know reasonably more expensive than a band, and probably a little bit too much. Now, this is good for ankle, for mobility, but for a hamstring, it might be too much, especially for some clients. So you might have to go down to a, band, a tubing band. They're a lot more cost-effective as well. So you can send them at home. You can stock your clinic up with them, that sort of thing. What I work on, the base one is a band and curl. Now, this is actually concentric. Okay, So just working on concentric work. Again, little trick with this one, and you have to sort of repeat it to try and test it, otherwise you sort of... You look silly in front of the client trying to work out, how am I going to get this on my foot? Because if you just put it on here, it's going to slip up your leg pretty badly. And if you're a guy, it's going to rip your hairs off your leg. So what I'll do, I can get this correct. Same drill. Okay. So into there and get it up. <laughs> See how hard this is? Into there. Then it's not going to move. Okay. If you go back for me, friend. Okay. So this position here. Okay, I need that band tension reasonably just on there, okay? Now with banded curls, the tension is going to be the weakest point, sorry, let me say that again. The tension is at the lightest when the hamstring is at its most vulnerable when you've got injury, which is the outer range. Okay, as it strengthens up, you've got more tension on there. And that's almost a bit too much for me because I don't have the biggest hamstrings in the world. but that sort of movement is what you're looking for, okay? And you can see I can't get any further. Maybe is that too much for me, right? So you've got to gauge this, because when you get down here, it's like, you know, it's off, okay? Well, that's what we want to start with. We want to use bands so the graded tension gets harder and harder and harder and harder, and they work on that inner range strength up into there, and then they have to control it on the way down as they get more vulnerable out into here, into that position there. Because if you guys have tested torn hammies, you test them down here, that's where they're the weakest, right? You go and try and resist that, and they go, oh, God, I've got nothing. You resist the mid-range, they've got some tone, and again, they can contract it. Okay, so when they're starting off the strength thing, there's no point having the weight really heavy. So this is where you go, where people make a mistake and throw them straight on the machine, well, the weight's heavy down here. Try and get that up. So you'd have to go eccentric at that point, we'll show you that. But if you're going concentric, you start way down here. A few tips with this one. Don't make a mistake of letting them go into extension here, okay? Get your physiology correct 
get that neutral spine. Some people can even access a bit of glute in this position, okay? So they can actually turn it on and get a bit of glute stabilizing the hip so they can just isolate and do pure knee flexion with that and just straight into the hamstring. Because if the hamstring's doing the job to do extend the hip, then it's gonna fatigue quickly. So if you can get the glute to help out, remember the glute is an accessory, if you like, the hamstring, the hip extension, if you can get it helping out, activating, stabilizing the hip and doing a job there, then you can focus on hamstring doing the knee flexion part. All right? So if that's too hard for people, go eccentric. Okay, or if you're working on especially tendinopathies, I like, I mean there's lots of research out there, you know, it used to be just, just eccentric and now it's concentric and now it's both, and you know, which one is it? I find, in my experience, doing a eccentric version is a good entry point. So because they, they, they struggle to pull it up, or they're sore, maybe it's a hamstring tear, yet they can still do an eccentric part. It flips up there. And then slowly coming down into that position. Okay? And again, not forgetting, okay, hang on, tilt that, clench that, hold that, come up, take away, I can bend out loads, and coming down. So you add the load on when the muscle's shortened in a safe position. That band's gonna to be too hard for most of you because I'm already feeling that cramping my hamstring, okay? So that's the trick with that one. Is go make sure you pull that band up and then slowly take it off, let the hamstring kick in, and then let it contract and release because the reason why I focus hard on eccentric work with hamstrings is one of the jobs of the hamstrings is a decelerator when you run. 